Hi there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM, where we're in the middle of a lineup looking at how movies approach the consequences of technology's hold on our lives. So far, we've shown two sci-fi classics, one that helped define the genre. Hi there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM, where we're in the middle of a lineup looking at how movies approach the consequences of technology's hold on our lives. So far, we've shown two sci-fi classics, one that helped define the genre, Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey from 1968, the other, a French film directed by Jean-Luc Godard, Alphaville from 1965. Both pictures offer chilling takes on artificial intelligence as it wages war on humans. Up next, another picture with a menacing digital overlord from 1976, Logan's Run. Here's the setup. The year is 2274. The Oakland A's have failed utterly in Las Vegas, humiliating their owner. They've returned to Oakland, where they have won 37 World Series titles. Sorry, I was daydreaming. The year is 2274. There's been a nuclear holocaust. That makes more sense. The surviving population lives in a domed city where a computer manages everything, including the hedonistic lives of the survivors and their descendants. The domed city has a rule. At the age of 30, everyone goes into carousel, where, as they've been told all their lives, they'll be renewed or reborn. Those who doubt the renewal story, who refuse to walk into carousel, who try to escape, they're called runners. To bring them back, there's an elite police force known as the Sandmen. Michael York leads the cast playing a Sandman called Logan Five. He's about to turn 30 and head to Carousel. As in our earlier movies tonight, there's a standoff between the main character and this rather belligerent computer czar. This time, the supercomputer has a female voice provided by Virginia Ann Ford. Another tech first for Logan's run, the use of holograms. Smarter people than I might know the hologram was invented in 1948 by a Hungarian engineer named Dennis Gabor, no relation to Zsa Zsa and Eva. York became the first big star featured in a hologram on screen. Since then, movies and television have taken holograms to a whole new level. Star Trek, The Next Generation, which premiered in 1987, brought us the holodeck, which was a way for characters to connect with people from the past or from their own imaginations. It's a vital science fiction storytelling device. From 1976, directed by Michael Anderson, also with Jenny Agater, Richard Jordan, Farrah Fawcett, and Peter Ustinov. Logan's Run. In the 1967 novel that inspired Logan's Run, the cutoff age for Carousel is 21, not 30. The age was changed for the film largely for casting purposes. It meant a greater number of experienced actors were available. Michael York, who played Logan Five, Richard Jordan as Francis Seven, and Michael Anderson Jr., who played Doc, he was the son of the movie's director, were all over 30 years old when they were cast. They could play 30, but not 21. Logan's run went through a challenging development, eight years with a legion of different writers and producers, a virtual carousel, sorry. It was also at the time one of the most expensive sci-fi pictures ever made, costing MGM $9 million, almost as much as 2001 A Space Odyssey. Audiences responded to it. It made $25 million in North America, another $25 million worldwide. I've always found it to be a great sci-fi idea in search of a movie that met the challenge. Perhaps because of that, since the mid-1990s, there have been a number of false starts on a Logan's Run remake. I still love to see it happen. It was among the first movies I remember seeing in a theater. Filmed mostly in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Logan's Run earned Oscar nominations for its cinematography and art direction and won a Special Achievement Award for its visual effects. One year later, two movies, Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, would completely change the art of visual effects. Coming up. A crazed computer has designs on Julie Christie in a tech thriller from 1977. Demon Seed is next on Turner Classic Movies. Next on TCM, Demon Seed, then Brainstorm, and later, The Seventh Victim. 
TCM is on eight days a week. Next on TCM, Brainstorm, then the seventh victim, and later, Cat People. We're feline good about this lineup tonight.